Welcome to Off the Press on a bright Tuesday morning here in the city of Lagos. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'm not doing this alone. I have with me a social commentator, Ekene Ezeji. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here again. <laughs> All right. We have uh, a couple of papers. We will just start with the Vanguard newspaper to uh, see what's going on and get the conversation started. The screamer here is how DSS, police, OPC, rescue kidnapped passengers in Oshun. Uh, it has a couple of riders. Gunmen hijack four Oshobo-bound vehicles um, along Imesi Ile. Ibokun Road. Uh, kidnappers let off aged pregnant passengers, nursing moms, take 10. Okay, a whole lot of uh, negatives on that front page. Uh, all victims freed. Oh, okay, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, OPC, DSS, police rally, work together. All victims freed. Uh, if you want to read details of that story, you will find it on page five. But before you head that way, our guest will share her thoughts. Uh, let's see what other headlines we have here. At the top of the paper on your screen, you see judiciary not free. We beg for funds. CJN laments at swearing in of new sands. So that kind of doesn't seem to sound like what he actually said. Yeah, but yeah. I, I don't know what angle the Vanguard is taking it from this morning. Let's start with that. Yes, I can enlighten you on that one. Yeah. I, 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 that was interesting for me this morning. Um, essentially, he's been, he's trying to be upfront with us. He's saying, look, the CJN, as long as they are cash trapped in the way they are funded, they end up not being as independent as they ought to be. So because of their financial, you say, dependency on the state, on the you know, federal uh, state, anybody can somehow put them under pressure in a way because of their financial dependency. So he's basically saying, it's time to revisit our salaries and, and you know, basically fund us better so we can stand tall and independent of people who may want to pressurize us. There seems to be a lot of money in this country, but we keep hearing things like but, underfunding. We yes. hear the lawmakers getting how many billions yeah, for these, cars. That's and the legislature. Somebody, yeah, the legislature having that amount, and then you have the judiciary uh, itself mm. that helps on the pillar on which all those persons come to power. And should be the most independent. Yes. yes. I mean, I, I know a recent article I read, they, apparently their, their salaries have been static for a number of years now. So they have, they, it would seem that they have something to cry about. And I do support the fact that they should be financially independent. It's crucial at this point because we need them to not be, in a way, vulnerable to people who may want to manipulate them. Not to say that that's any excuse because what should the rest of us do then if you know, the justice system are saying that they're vulnerable because they're being paid not as much as they would like to be paid, then what will the average man in the streets do? Should we all then you know, <laughs> fall over and, and cry? You know, Good so, question. Yeah, they need to set the standard ir irrespective. But I do hear what he's saying and I support that. All right, let's look at um, some other headlines. Oh, sorry, I still here. want to talk about the one you first read. I mean, okay. I, it's be beautiful news. I mean, the fact that, you know, they were able to work together, the police, the OPC, and rescue everybody on that bus. Uh, anyone who knows, knows that really kidnappers are bad news at the moment. They're, they're running riots in Nigeria. And it's, uh, I'm really impressed that everyone on that bus was able to get off free. So um, it's hooray. It's good news The best news would actually mm. be no kidnappers exactly. on the roads. That would be the perfect news. Yes. I We'd love to know what happened to the kidnappers. Hopefully they were apprehended. Yeah, we um, didn't hear anything about that. That information will be handy. All right, let's see uh, other headlines. That Senate will support Buhari to grow economy. That's Senator uh, Uba Sani speaking. Um, something on climate change. Mm. I have plans. I have plans to reverse the effects of climate change, says Buhari at uh, the UN uh, Assembly. He is there at the moment. He should be back soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Nigeria needs $3 trillion infra investment in 30 years. And of course, the picture of the Minister of Transportation, mm. you know, looking stern, right? They're mm. pointing out <laughs> stuff for them to see. Mm. Uh, we have Ruga may spread to Southwest YCE warns. Second Niger Bridge, 10 host villages at war with Julius Berger's staff. Okay, FG arranged showery today, select witnesses. Tribunal reaffirmed Sawulu's victory um, at the court behind the paper is sports news, but let's uh, come to Ikene and see uh, th this idea of um, 
the Ruger. What, what do you make? Yeah, well, the expression spreads makes yeah, it sound like a virus, doesn't yeah, it? It's, it doesn't it's a bit sound very positive. To me. Yes, because we get the impression that you know it's voluntary, as in yeah. if you want to take it on, you're free to adopt it. And then another time, you, you almost get the impression that it's being forced on the state. So which is it? Because the fact that they said they've suspended it, everyone heaved a sigh of relief, and some even said, look, rather than suspend it, completely, you know cancel it all together. Uh, what I felt should be done in the interim is that you should go around sensitizing people because sometimes when you speak to certain people who are involved uh, or people who are maybe Mieti Allah people, they suggest that actually it's not what it appears to be, that the government hasn't taken the time to explain that you know, essentially these are people who already live in the midst of the existing states and all they're looking for is a, a more defined area from which to operate. So it's not like they're looking to claim that every, more land. Uh, uh, half the population and the elite is daft. If they're saying that we don't seem to understand what Ruga means, even the elites have come out to say there is something not quite right. A bit with sinister. That. Yeah, yeah, the so problem is they haven't they put saying... constraints because um, people have rightly said that once you create an environment where they can essentially thrive and call home, then you're inviting, because our borders are porous, you're inviting people who will look like they are amongst them who are from outside. Because the problem we have, a lot of times we're being told with Fulani herdsmen or the, 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 the criminal elements are apparently from Fulani men who are not Nigerian Fulanis who are indigent to those areas. So you want to sort of say to yourself, um, how do we now separate the two? Once you create an environment that is like an oasis, where you have schools, you have you know um, fresh water, you have you know generally systems to encourage good living, then you're likely to get more people infiltrate. And then you know how do you tell the difference? And you're, you see, the, people are worried that you will then encourage more of an influx. And over the years, what you will now have are people who now claim ownership of of lands that they never really Does had it ownership worry, of. Really, our, our pension to just. Um, let things slide and then when it comes back again we are all you know in a huff about it this Ruga issue was not settled as so many other issues were not settled we only heard it was suspended and then the fever died down you know what, what do you expect to see on this particular matter yes I mean you're right I am worried by the way and sometimes I feel our government plays us as fools you know they feel sometimes oh let's suspend it people will stop drawing attention to it and then let's it seems, let's bring it under the radar. But what you owe people is proper enlightenment, proper conscientization, proper informing them. You know, so you can avert a kind of backlash because a lot of times people are reacting because they're, they're worried and rightly so. So if you took the time to speak to them as human beings, call town hall meetings and express and address their fears, you're less likely to get these kind of reactions. All right, we have the punch newspaper now. We will look at the headline. Substandard private schools rise. Gulf neglect supervision. Private school owners engage in underhand dealings. That's according to a professor. Schools employ secondary school leavers, pay them 4,000 naira. Mm -hmm. um, that's a story that is not palatable at all. Uh, we also have CBN, FRCN sanction for banks for money laundering others. You find details on page 27 of the paper. And, uh, okay, let's talk about that thing on your screen right now, the scene of accident uh, where, um, you know, Gun State, I think it was also captured uh, somewhere in the Vanguard newspaper. Mm -hmm. It says, scenes of an accident on the Long Bridge along the Lagos Ibado Expressway, Expressway in Ogun State. Mm. We certainly hope that no loss, uh, life was lost. And at the very bottom, you will see OAU to have own airport soon. That's, uh, that's according to the VC. Um, Lagos Ibado Railway begins operation December. That's the federal government speaking there. Uh, something on Ogun schools defy Abiodun, collect controversial fees. Um, Naval commander's murder, military quizzes suspects, tightened security. Boko Haram plans attack on Zamfara, commander's ready, police saying. On the back page of the punch, we have Nigeria's muddled policy on Western Sahara. Of course, uh, the filt captured by expression on the back page. I don't know if we can just see it quickly. Uh, on the back page of the punch, a newspaper, you see it, there you have it, uh, a filt field scene. Let's talk about this screamer here, yes. private school. I, I, my, my younger sister, I was actually asking her to, uh, why don't she teach? She has a, a degree. I said, do you know how much they pay? They pay as low as 5,000 naira. And this was saying crazy. that it is 4,000 naira. Well, uh, it shouldn't be, you know, because if you <laughs> I don't really know about schools outside Lagos, but if you ask on average how much people pay for these private schools, 
your mouth would drop, you know, some of them as much as one million per term for, ch for a child. So to pay a uh, teacher, I know there's a range, obviously there's some that charge much less, but really private schools are getting funded by the parents, by the people who are using their right. service. So they ought to be able to pay their teachers well enough and give them a certain standard because your, your teachers are only going to teach to the level of their own exposure or, you know, their own, do you say, um, yeah, exposure might be the only word for now. So you need to make sure your, your teachers are well presented, well exposed, well settled so that when they're in the classroom, they're able to also convey that to the children. So I don't see what they gain, except they obviously it's a business for them. They're just looking at the profit margins. And unfortunately, you know, parents should be more discerning. That's really all I can say. If the police don't go after them, or this, the law somehow doesn't check them, then the parents themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. There, ought to be more There's an allegation here now that the government is neglecting supervising these um, private schools, and maybe that's why this They don't is seem to have a standard rampant. from which they operate. Some of them don't even have playgrounds. They don't have any space for the children to play. So everyone now can set up a school, it seems, in a, in a house, you know, no bigger than a house. So I think parents ought to be the ones calling the shots now. Don't, don't be fooled by everyone who just does packaging. Look beneath the surface, ensure for me, the standard would always be the teachers. If I go into a school and the teachers are well presented, then I know that at least they're being well taken care of. And then I have a little more confidence to say, well, perhaps they're following through on what they're presenting outwardly. Uh, uh, all right, there are some other headlines here. I missed this one on Tinubu or Shemole El Rufaj 2023 campaign posters spark debate. And then we also have the $9.6 billion uh, judgment. Mm. I'm just going to let you take a peek of the headline you want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, now. the Tinubu or Shemole one is troubling in the sense that apparently uh, Tinubu Tinubu's uh, posters have been taken down, but it's still troubling that people are already campaigning for 2020. We're not, we're not happy with what the, res the outcome, let's call it that way, of the elections we've just had. We don't feel we're getting dividends of our, you say, democracy, because you know there's so much in the news that lets you know that the polity are not content. So why are you pushing? And it is the old boys, old boys recycling them. So they're, they're still, they're still going about business as usual. So insensitive to the fact that. Look, I know we're still talking about Shore being arraigned and stuff, but a lot of what he was, why he was such a threat to the system and why he still is, is that a lot of what he was advocating for was still touching at the heart of people's discontent. So let's not feel too relaxed and start planning for 2023. I, I know I read a story of um, the governor, Obi Anno, in um, Anambra State, where he mm. was also saying that the, the PDP there were unsettling him because they were busy already preparing for 2023. And they told him, look, face your, don't use us as your excuse. But it's clear there are rustlings among the political class and they're already preparing themselves to hand over to the next. Yeah, well, this 2019 is done and dusted. It's Whatever happening. Get, it's it's happening. Get, I'm basically. sorry, but they're not in it to serve us. That's, that's the message they're sending out. This day, newspaper Nest, we have Nigeria foreign legal team plot strategy to stop PNID's $9.6 billion award. That's it in your screen. And then just above the masthead, you see neck probes alleged power rejection by Disco's TCM. Electricity distributors renew brickbats over poor supply. Atiku asks Supreme Court to quash to a tribunal's affirmation of Buhari's election. Um, we have uh, other stories uh, here. Supreme Court won't be subservient to anyone, says CJN. Uh, that story has been captured in other papers as well. Climate change world heads towards catastrophe, Buhari tells UN. On the back page, presidential powers and the VP. That's Tuesdays with Ruben Abati on the back page of the paper. I would like to read the Ruben Abati one because it's, it's sort of tickling an area of interest for me. We could, you know, there's a lot of noise being made. Presidential There's power. Chinese whispers, let's say, you know, as in people have alleged that the president is clamping down on the vice president, all not, although not overtly. They're Chinese whispers that go around, you know, because we know recently he Why reshuffled. Is yeah, because it's people don't, there, 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 there doesn't seem to be hard evidence, but they're just suggestions that there's a move he's making, which seems to have a precedent in other presidents on their second term. They seem to have also similarly tried to clamp down on their vice presidents. That's troubling for most people because most of us see the vice president as the, do you say the, um, academic one, if you like, the one who has the intellect to give us at least the reassurance that there is some in intellectual integrity in the presidency. So if you clamp down on him, um, then you're really taking out a vast, you, you're robbing us of that confidence, let's just put it that way. But so far, we, we have nothing to substantiate okay. that, so we're watching, we're watching that space. Okay, um, so. 
the PNID, obviously, we're all waiting with bated breath. We know that I think they said by the 26th, we'll hear a bit more on the team that went to the UK to argue that. I've been more and more encouraged by the way we have been strategizing. You know, we know we've arraigned or we asked for the extradition of um, McQueen. That's the person who owned the PNID company, his son, to be extradited so he can face our courts. So I think we're beginning to grow in confidence. Is his son a part of the deal? You know, he's an heir. His father is dead. And so he's an heir. So he's, you could say he's a party to, he, he would stand to gain, let's just say. I'm sure there must be a link. Otherwise, they wouldn't yeah, be in a position to ask for that. But I just like the way we're approaching things at the moment. I like the fact that we put together a formidable team to go to, U, to the UK. I like the fact that we also were able to put forward a case to say, look, the company PNID were fraudulent insofar as they were evading taxes here and various other things like that. And that shows that we're thinking. That shows that we're capable of taking things from another perspective. Uh, I would like your thought on uh, Atiku asking the Supreme Court to quash tribunal's affirmation of Bukhari's election. Some would say, give it a rest. It's, uh, I mean, you probably will not <laughs> get it. Or um, are they being too preemptive? Yeah, I mean, I, I did watch uh, Asan, like I think I must have said some time ago, that he basically, his, his position, San Clark, his position was that he shouldn't even bother but that his lawyers would not give him that information because they're in it to make money for themselves. And he spoke, he said he's open to be challenged on that statement. Uh, he really feels that insofar as he's going to present the same evidence he presented for the tribunal, it won't go beyond you know, where he went with the tribunal. I, I, in a way, secretly I support him because I'm always for people expressing their democratic rights. And I still feel that there might be a case to make, it's just that the case hasn't been made yet you know, on, on, the, on the balance. <laughs> we'll so, just leave it there. Mm, it is money to spend, let's put it that way. Mm. Okay, uh, we'll go to the Nation newspaper now. Uh, still on the $9.6 billion verdict, uh, P&ID offers to negotiate with federal government, uh, a couple of riders, Nigeria to pursue case to logical conclusion, delegation to allay investors' fear. And then we have the situation yesterday at the mm. Unity Bank uh, in flames, part of it captured, although our concerns were dispelled, uh, that no life was lost. So we're thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have a Navy commander just transferred before murder. Uh, we also have other stories on the side. Nigeria loses $1.5 billion yearly. And then verdict today on UK Parliament. Mm -hmm. I I'd like to get your thoughts on that, but let me just see what's at the top. Um, CJN, that's at the top of the paper mm -hmm. on your screen, uh, judges overworked, underpaid. And then we also have Bialsa PDP boils over running mate Dixon on Ruffled. Malabu, a Bacha family takes on Adoki, ex AGX claim <laughs> falls. Uh, I think it's uh, yes. an aftermath of a book. Now yes, reading. Yes, you okay. know, we spoke about this a bit off yeah. air. I mean, this is a man who has an interesting past or leading up to now. Um, from what I read, he wrote, he said, he, you know, when he, he fled, he felt he was being persecuted at the time he fled. Um, he said he thought of taking his own life, but the turning point for him was that if he took his life, who would be there to tell his own side? So he would basically die as someone accused of something that he wants to exonerate himself of. So I, I, I believe this mission, if you want to call it that, in the book he has written, is to exonerate himself. He's thrown out a lot of sting bombs, uh, stink bombs. And, um, you know, some of the names he's thrown out as well. Obviously, he would expect that someone would come back after him. So here you have it. Um, predictably, Abacha's family are taking him on. And I'm sure there are other people who will be lining up behind Abacha's family just to see how successful they are with taking. So I'm not sure how profitable this would be for him. Some would have said maybe he should have just laid low and just lived his life, you know, and, and you know, let his life tell the story. But, you know, people are for justice and I'm, I'm one to say, look, go for it if you feel you have the courage. Um, you know, de defend yourself. Uh, let's go a bit off our shores and talk about the situation in the UK for mm. a bit. Uh, there is the parliament, about the shutdown of yes, the parliament the and the controversy. Parliament. <laughs> yes. um, you know, people say at least the system is working. You know, it was, a, it was a, do you say, a brave move and maybe a bit brash. I'm not necessarily a fan of Boris Johnson. <laughs> um, I, but I, I do respect someone who feels if you're going to do something, take the bull by the horns. People's problem with Theresa May was that she was somehow dithering between two. She couldn't make up her mind if she wanted to govern and be maybe, on, maybe unpopular with her, her base, which she would have to make that choice. Or you know, try and be popular with your base and then lose the popular support of the people. She really, really needed to make up her mind. But in the end, she never did, and which I feel was 
the reason why she had her downfall. So now you have someone like Boris Johnson who's ready to damn the consequences, and he, he made a bold move. Some have accused him of tricking the queen because for him to prorogue the parliament, he would need to have the consent of the queen. And they feel he maybe presented it to her in such a way that she, she felt it was the right thing to do. And so to somehow exempt her from the blame, they are going after him for you know, tricking her, essentially. So um, why, we, why we like this one is that we're sure that the parliament will not leave any stone unturned. We know that there will be no underhand dealings because everyone is, is in there to, yeah. to make their point. So it's, it's going to be an interesting one. All right. Any other headline you want to talk on quickly before we uh, move on to a bit of sports? I mean, just to say a bit more about oh, the Navy commander. I was going to talk about CGM, but I think the Navy commander, I'm happy with the way this story is being pursued. We, we heard that this lady's body was dismembered put in um, a Ghana must go bag and, and left in a shallow well. And this story broke, I think, over the weekend. And still now, we're still on the story. We're still going after. We're going to find out. I hope we're going to, in the next couple of days, discover who had the guts to do this. Now, the fact that they reveal that she was just transferred suggests that there is something behind this. It wasn't a random killing. It, was, it, it would seem now that there's an element of targetedness. Um, so I'm happy with the way we go after these murders. I know you know, you know, nobody could have missed the issue in Port Harcourt where they actually finally caught hold of Gracious David who had been serially yeah. killing women in hotels. So we're happy that now we are beginning to see that if we follow the lead, we can uncover these criminal uh, elements and in a way dissuade other people from feeling they can get away with that kind of crime. All right, let's uh, see a bit of sports before we wrap things up. Um, on the back page of the Vanguard Sports, we have the Messi win again, a best, man, best men's player award. Uh, we also have uh, Mourinho, I deserved to be sacked at Manchester United. That's another <laughs> one for you there. Uh, let's see the complete sports now. It has um, Raul on the front page it's saying, I'll play my best Eagles against Brazil. Uh, that's uh, complete sports. So we also have Aribo still shocked by Eagles invite and it is joint fourth best tackler in Europe. Yana Cho gets final chance to impress uh, Iwobi. Six uh, second ELF goal in 12 games. So mm. which would you want to just, <laughs> I, you know, I'm share just impressed. I mean, football, yeah. football is big business. I mean, recently it is. the headlines. I wish I had as much passion as people Honestly. so I could, you know, make follow, some money follow on this. the side. <laughs> yes, there's clearly money to be made. And yeah. we're hearing, I mean, we, we, recently we're hearing of people, players like Tomori and Abraham who are being wooed back to Nigeria. They have um, multiple citizenships, so they have the pick of, you know, so yeah. like someone like Tom Murray said he could be, he could go to Canada, he could go to the UK. He'll see, he'll see. He could also come to Nigeria because he's a citizen of all three countries. These are young men who have talents and are being wooed by several countries. I mean, that, that's mouth watering. And then you have someone like Abraham who has been also encouraged by fashion who say, come back to Nigeria, we'll, we'll, we'll be, you know, happy to receive you here. And now you have somebody else who's, you know, being invited to play Aribo. So obviously, we're, we're, I think we're building up our team. Some would argue, though, that we shouldn't be so quick to go after people who are outside our shores, even if they have Nigerian citizenship. We should focus on grooming the homegrown talent because we have enough talent here. We shouldn't be so obsessed with buying you know, players from outside at heavy sums when we have homegrown talent on our shores. Okay, we're really out of time, but I want to take your thoughts on Messi. He's winning FIFA's best player, best uh, men's player award yeah. again. I, I, even for a non-football playing, <laughs> yeah. a non-football fan, most people have heard of Messi. So, you know, yeah, good on him. I'm happy they even have, uh, I didn't know they had a FIFA award. I, mean, I was <laughs> listening to it this morning and thinking, oh, really interesting. You know, they even award their coaches, they award. So, you know, I'm happy for Messi. I don't think many people would, would say, you know, it was undeserved. Again, it's always a pleasure to have you on the Newspaper Review. Thank you, Felicity. Thank you. I guess that's where we wrap things up now. Thank you for watching. Be good. Have a lovely day. My name is Felicity Izewiki.